Got him. Oh, there's a small mouth right there. <laughs> Dragging that split shot, man. He couldn't stand it. Couldn't stand it. <laughs> Come on, baby. <laughs> Come on. You're done. You're done. We got you. Man, for a little guy, he's got some shoulders now. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'm using an eight pound test line here. I'll tell you. Oh man, that's a good little smallie. Look at there. Little smallmouth bass. Come on. All right, come on. Little Apache Lake smallmouth bass right there, huh? Hello, buddy. How you doing? Ah, boy, I had you good with that little tiny hook, didn't I? Come on. Oh, there we go. Look at there. That's a beautiful, look at how red his eyes are, that little dude. All right, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> Folks, today we're at Apache Lake, one of my all-time favorite lakes. I love this lake early in the spring, and it's early. The water temperature is 58, 59. You can sometimes hit 60, but uh, I'm going to an old technique that a lot of folks, I think, kind of got away from over the years because of the new drop shot. Now, I'm, I'm one of them that's done it as well, but one of my, before I ever went to the drop shot, one of my key techniques was a split shot rig. And it's a lot of fun to throw. You can see I'm throwing a little tiny uh, crawdad right now, but what I do with my split shot rigs and what I've done over the years is I've made what I call a mini Carolina rig. I like that better than just pinching on a split shot on my line. I'm using an eight pound line. I'm using a little uh, eighth ounce tungsten weight. I'm using a little bead and then I go with the swivel. Okay. And then I have about a two foot to a foot and a half, uh, depending on the season. I'll go with a longer one during the summer leader. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm using a number one hook, straight shank hook, you can see it here. I like a light wire hook so the baits act naturally in the water. So I, I want it to be a light wire hook. And then because we know we're in the spring and the fish are eating crawdads and, and uh, if they are making beds that we can't see, I want the crawdad to come through the bed. I'm using a little tiny three inch chigger craw. And man, I'm telling you what, that can be the big ticket for catching some fun fish right here at Apache Lake. Little tiny craws this time of year work great. Fish can't stand them, and the smallmouth can't stand them, so they'll, they'll eat them. Actually, they like them, but they can't stand them around in their nest if they've got one. But that's the rig right there. I'm excited we're gonna go around in the flats. Remember, this time of year, on any lake you're at, when you start hitting that 58, 59 degree water early in the spring, and uh, these fish will start moving in the shallows, they'll use these pockets, these sheltered pockets to make beds. And as they're doing it, you gotta find those, those uh, channels that they like to move up in, you know, alongside the walls, alongside the creek channels, uh, you know, going in towards the backs of the shallows. Uh, they'll use that, that waterway right there is basically a pathway to get back there. And so if you learn that, that's where this kind of stuff comes in handy. It's a lot of fun to throw. So <clears throat> we're in an area right here where I, there's a lot of flats. I mean, just around by Turtle Island, there's tons of flats in this area where the smallmouth and the largemouth like to spawn. So I'm gonna go to the most probable area that I know that I can probably go out and catch some fish. And I'm just gonna make those casts with this and just drag it along. You know, you'll fill the bite. A lot of times with this, it'll feel spongy. You'll just pick up on it and your line will be moving and you'll feel it, you know? Um, but it's a fun rig to throw. And the one thing I love about doing the, what I call the split shot, um, my version of the split shot anyways, uh, that I like to throw is the mini Carolina rig, is because when the fish actually grabs this bait and this, this weight is on the bottom, he doesn't really feel the weight. He's pulling the line directly to your rod. This weight slips up and down, so he's pulling it 
and he doesn't feel all that weight, so it doesn't feel unnatural to him. So they'll walk away with this thing, and you'll, you'll get direct contact to your rod. So that's one of the reasons I like it. There's one right there. Swimming out with it. All right. Oh. <laughs> it's a largemouth bass. Come on, baby. <laughs> Another Apache Lake bass right there. Yeah, you can tell the males are starting to move up. <laughs> Look at that fish. Beautiful fish. Got some beautiful markings to them. See you, buddy. That cross strikes again. <laughs> you know, a lot of times when you get bit on this thing, you're going to be constantly weighing it. And very rarely does it feel like you get that thunk, thunk. You got to understand that when you're throwing this, what you're weighing, you know, you're constantly weighing the bait or feeling the bait. And if it feels spongy to you, it's going to, you're going to pull up on it a lot of times. And, and you'd be pulling and you're like, man, it feels kind of spongy. If it feels abnormal like that, you know, when you're using tungsten, especially, you know, now that we've, we've got tungsten uh, weights like we have, you can really feel the bottom really good as far as being able to tick a rock and things like that. You'll know the difference. And uh, the more you throw this, the better off you'll be with, you know, you, the more you'll learn with it. But uh, that, that's the whole ticket right there is it'll just start feeling a little bit spongy. You're like, hmm, if you feel the bite, set the hook right away. But a lot of times, you know, if it feels a little bit spongy, don't be afraid to set the hook. You never know what might be on the end of the rod right there. And that's the difference, you know, with the between the split shot and say the drop shot, a lot of times you'll feel the thunk with a drop shot maybe, but with this, uh, you're not gonna feel all that, all that. You're just gonna pick up on it, it's gonna feel spongy. Got him. That's a good fish right there. That's a good fish right there. Large mouth. <laughs> he was up in that shallow water. That's what happens, they'll move up there and start hitting them crawdads. Oh, come on, buddy. You grew a little bit from that last fish we caught. Oh, yeah. Little split shot bears. Look at him. Beautiful little fish, we'll let him go. You know, this time of year, it's really important too. I say early in the spring, spring, late spring, you know, definitely catch, uh, practice catch and release because you want the, these fish to reproduce. So we've got fish through the whole year, you know? So, uh, but it's a lot of fun to do. I'll tell you, just throw up in the shallows. Even if you can't see, just throw up in the shallows and, and drag something through there. This, this, I really love this little mini Carolina rig, split shot rig. I, I like to throw it. If I was to throw deeper, now if we were to go any deeper, what I would probably do is go to the Carolina rig, you know, on a little bit bigger bait. But because these fish are probably a little bit spooky from just moving up in the shallows this time of year, I want to go with something a little bit smaller, a little finesse. And that's what I'm doing. So, you know, it's just, a, like I said, that mini Carolina rig works great. Works really good. Ah. You know, let's talk a little bit about the, the rod and reel I'm using just real fast seven foot to seven and a half foot uh, medium action rod. I use a Johnny Morris Carbon Light Sig Signature Series rod, 7.2, and then of course my Stratic 2500 reel. You don't wanna go with a real big reel. Stay with something kind of small around that 2500 range. That's what I'm using, you know, the mid range type reel, and it works great. But uh, this is the technique right here, this is it. Just kind of throw up there shallow and drag it back. I felt that fish hit. That fish actually hit pretty aggressively. So, you know, I had my line kind of tight and uh, I was just dragging it across the bottom. And a lot of times if you're just dragging it and you've got your rod tip up, you'll feel the thunk. But if you've got any slack in your line, that's when they might hit it and then you pick up on it and it feels spongy. So, you know, remember that you've got direct, direct rod to lure contact because that weight's not involved. When, when it slips through the line like that. They just pick it up and you'll feel it direct. They don't have to pick, with a, with a original split shot rig, for example, if you were to pinch that split shot on your, 
on your line, that split shot sitting down on the bottom, your, your, your lure's up here. Well, that fish has to grab that bait, pick up on the drop shot for you to feel it, okay? So, or the, not the drop shot, but the split shot. So, so when he has to do all that, if he picks it up and it feels heavy to him and it feels uncomfortable, a lot of times they'll spit it out. So that's one of the reasons I decided to go to this rig when I was a, a lot younger. <laughs> I've been throwing this rig as my split shot rig forever, but uh, it definitely works. And it's just basically a mini Carolina rig. You know, one thing about throwing these baits, throwing this particular rig, is you want to learn how to drag, you know? It's, it, it's something you have to learn how to do, is drag your bait. And I do it in sweeping motions like this. I'll, I'll kind of drag it like this, and then I use my reel to bring up my slack. You know, whether I'm doing it like this and, and feeling it come over top of a rock, I'm still using my rod. If you get in the habit of doing that, you'll feel things a lot better. I, I, I take a lot of folks out and I see them use, use the reel to actually drag the lure with. That's not how you do it. You want to utilize your rod. So you take up the slack with your reel, but you kind of pull drag. That way you feel everything on the end of that rod tip. That's very important to remember that when you're, when you're doing this kind of fishing. And it's a, it applies the same way for drop shots or Carolina rigs. You know, don't use the reel to pull your line with. Use the rod. That was a bite. I felt him. Oh, yeah, look at that. It's a smallmouth. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Little shallow water smallmouth bass. Oh, there he is. Oh, that's a good one, too. That's a big smallmouth there. That's a good one. These are the kind of fish I like right here. Big old bronze back fish. They can't stand that bait. No! Come on now. <laughs> they got shoulders here at Apache Lake, folks. Shoulders. You made me work for you, bud. Look how they just barely get it in the lip. That tells me they're real skittish and barely hitting it. Well, he didn't choke that thing down, did he? Beautiful fish right there. <laughs> All right, we'll let him go. <sighs> That's the ticket, is when you feel the drag, you can feel the bites a lot better too. So when you drag the bait, you know, I haven't said enough about this little chigger craw. It's made by Berkeley. Make no mistake, this bait is probably a great bait for Texas rigging, for Carolina rigging, for the jigs, the backs of jigs. And it doesn't look like much. Let me tell you something. Us to the naked eye looking at this doesn't look like a craw to me. I mean, as far as the, you can get more realistic pinchers. People really get into that realistic thing. But let me show you something about this bait. Watch what happens when I drag it in the water. If you can see the little, the little uh, pinchers, look at them. See how they wave like that? So when you're dragging it, you're getting that flip like that. And when they're flipping like that, it creates a lot of commotion, commotion, a bait has to have attracting and triggering qualities, and we've talked about this before, to catch fish. Well, it's got an attracting quality, and it's definitely got that triggering quality as well because of that, those, the way the, the flaps of the pinchers work. So even though it doesn't look like a real crawdad per se, it works, I think, almost better than the realistic crawdad you could be throwing out there for, for this kind of rig. It's awesome. I love it. I've, show, I've demonstrated these things in tanks. I've actually been reeling them in. As you're reeling them in to take another cast and had fish hit them out of a reaction strike. So don't underestimate this bait. It's a great bait. Okay, for my tip of the week, one little trick that'll help you catch more fish when you run into those black holes that you see in the flats. 
when you're dragging your bait through, stop it in those black holes and just give it a little bit of a twitch and just let it sit there before you start moving it again. A lot of times the bass will be right there and they're gonna hit it. Got him, jig fish. Oh, it's a good one too. <laughs> oh my goodness, oh. That is a big fish, folks. Come on, get in here. Get in here. <laughs> That's a big jig fish getting ready to move up on this flat right here. Look at that. Beautiful fish right there, huh? Here's the deal, when these fish start moving up shallow, you start seeing a lot of males moving shallow first. And then, what ends up happening, the females will sit out in the channel or right up on the ledge, wherever they're at. Right here we have some fish habitat, but you can pretty much do it along the bank there when they're, they use it as a, a runway. And they'll use the channel and get up on top and, uh, and spawn and then come back down and sit right there in that channel. And, and a lot of times, if you're picking up a bunch of males in the shallows, you can back off to those ledges and, and catch those fish. That was a good fish. Got him that time. Got him that time. Ooh, that's a nice one. Oh, that's a big old smallmouth. <laughs> Look at that smallmouth, folks. Black, he's so black. <laughs> he been up the shallows a little bit, folks. <laughs> little split shot bears. <laughs> this is why I tell you it pays to look for those black spots. When the sun comes up, you fish the shallows, you drag stuff through it. We made a long cast at it. I didn't have to sight fish that fish. Oh, look at that fish. Oh, I got him in the corner of the mouth. I think we got him pretty good. Come on, buddy. That was fun. Okay, come on. Ah, yeah. Little split shot bass. <laughs> was he going somewhere? Huh? Was he going somewhere? Sharp hook, huh? <laughs> oh, I'm bleeding now. We got it though. Beautiful fish. It's getting back in the water. Oh. Oh. Oh, I stuck that hook right in my thumb. Whew. That's the ticket. Get up in these shallows. <laughs> that was fun. You know, a, a, you can go a long ways, folks, by just getting a good pair of polarized sunglasses, get up in the flats, in the shallows this time of year. You know, now remember, it doesn't matter how far off the bank we are. What matters is what's underneath the boat. And what I mean by that is if you're in, in that, you know, I'm in five foot of water, maybe three feet of water. So, I mean, the thing is, is realistically, we're way out here and those fish will be way out here. So many people get in on the banks and they fish the banks and those fish get used up. You get out here a little ways on some of them big flats, you know, and uh, a lot of guys won't fish those. They'll fish the outside. But uh, it's been a great day today. I'll tell you what, I love Apache Lake. Come check it out. And uh, there's not a hardly a soul here during spring break. It's uh, kind of awesome. People don't like coming down that dirt road, but I'm telling you right now, it's worth it. Till next week, we'll see you on the water. I'm Johnny Johnson.